The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Great to be back at the beginning of the show. Uh, just more than six weeks, and I'm not going to be back potentially every day just yet, easing back in, but I'm back today, man. I'm excited. We'll ease in as we got markets in negative territory right now with the S&Ps, negative by five points, trading at 53.27. You talk about a price tag, man. Just off of those highs, we get the NASDAQ 100, negative by about 50 points, 18,713. The Dow right now, just under the 40,000 price tag, quite a little bit of a sell-off yesterday. We reach a believe that's an all-time high. 40,213 in the futures. We're trading just under that price level at 39,941. And the Russell right now, negative by 13 points. You see the slide there, 2,096. How about Bitcoin, man? You talk about a run from yesterday, 72,360. We put Bitcoin on a daily. You see, bumping right up against those all-time highs of 74,415. Made back in March, we pull back to about a 50% retracement from the run-up you had this year. We're Trading right now at 71,545 in Bitcoin. How about crude, man? Crude is an interesting one. So, over the weekend, of course, you have the president of Iran dying in a helicopter crash. Backing things up to Sunday night, very little volatility whatsoever when you think about the president of Iran dying. Now, you got the supreme leader over there that runs everything. He was potentially one of the people that could have stepped into that role, though. So, to see that type of disruption in the Middle East, to see crude unfazed in any manner, you get a little bit of a run-up early in the session. We give that up. You just had a 77 price tag. We're trading at 78.18 right now in the price of crude. Uh, keep your eye on that one, man, because if crude can't even find a bid when you talk about the level of uncertainty that goes with that. And listen, Iran is not Saudi Arabia. I get it. Not even close. But nonetheless, no disruption whatsoever. And you actually have negative prices coming into the market. If you can't find a bid in that type of geopolitical turmoil. And yeah, again, Iran, nowhere near the participant of something like Saudi Arabia that they have going on. But nonetheless, keep your eye on it, man. Because if crude can't find a bid there, what's that mean? That means that, man, we got plenty of supply in the crude market. Gold talk about a run yesterday as well up to 24.54 we're negative by seven dollars on the session but you're still pushing near all-time highs at 24.31 how about the run silver has had man up to 32.75 some of these gold and silver stocks you talk about a run and then we talk about yields yeah so right now we're trading at 109.07 in the 10 year let's see what we're yielding right now as we do that you jump over to the yield on the 10-year. We're talking about a yield of 4.41, we'll call it. 109.07 on the 10-year. A little bit of higher price, lower yield. You jump over to the dollar, though. Check out the run we had on the dollar just recently. Dollar spiking to almost 105. You spike to 104.75. We're at 104.65 right now on the dollar. You take a look at the daily on the dollar. Now, what's interesting is you back things up to the week, uh, to the beginning of the year, right? You run from 100 almost up to 106.50 all you did is you back up to the 382 we're at 104.65 now what would be so interesting here all right i'm going to put things on a weekly for a second and i'm just zooming in on this year the weekly you go from 100.59 all the way up to 106.51 you pull back i mean could you imagine if this is actually going to break out to the upside and be a little bit contrarian with everything going on okay but don't think it's not possible. That's all I'm putting out there. Okay, and I know it's not a direct call, but nonetheless, don't think it's not possible. And what that lines up with is that you had, and of course, they're inversely correlated, right? When you have lower price on the tenure, that's correlating to higher yield. When you have higher yield, it's correlating to a stronger dollar. But it is interesting that both of them basically just pulled back to a 382, right? You had the tenure come up to a price point of almost 110. Okay, you got a nice tail there on a weekly. Let's put it on a daily just to take a look at this thing. All right, you just got above the 382. That also came into the area of resistance, which is the lows of February. And man, if you ever get an A to B, C to D acceleration here, 
in the 10 year, you're talking about a move from about 103 to 107. So about a six point move that would take you somewhere in the neighborhood of 103 and a half to 104 area is where you could drive down to the 10 year and you jump over the dollar index. We're talking about a move that's about six points from 100.50 to 106.50 and your B point would be almost at about 104 and that would bring you to maybe 110. Now, not that outlandish when you look at the fact that you back it up on a weekly, 110 is you know, below where we were last year. But there is some speculation, man. And with that, we're going to jump over to where we kick things off. And we're going to kick things off with, we're going to do it with a little Fed speak. We did it yesterday when I was talking to our man Jacob. How about Waller today? Several months of good inflation data before lowering rates. It's all going to be data dependent. I think we should probably all know that we're looking for some good data. But that's almost the best case scenario. That's what I found myself looking at this morning, right? He wants several months of good inflation data before lowering rates. So that's like your base case right now. Okay, so what happens if you don't get that? Well, if you don't get that, that means that we have to wait a little bit longer. And yeah, I think hikes are probably, at least unless we get some startling out of the, out of the blue data that inflation really starts rocking again. Anything can happen data dependent, of course, okay? But that's your base case. If inflation keeps going lower, maybe we get a cut. Maybe we get one this year in a few months. But that's your best case scenario right now. Um, yeah, central bankers should never say never, but the data suggests that inflation is not accelerating. And I believe that further increases in the policy rate are probably unnecessary. I would agree there. We're still at five and a quarter to 5.5%. So to bring it back to the R star, right, the natural rate of growth that the Fed has to set their policy at to be equal where they're not really accelerating or decelerating, It'd be hard pressed to make the case that inflation is anywhere near five and a half percent right now. It'd also be hard pressed to make the case that it's at two percent right now. Okay, but they probably don't need to go to six to seven percent at this time. Nonetheless, um, yeah, Waller pointed to a string of recent data from flattening retail sales to cooling in both the manufacturing and services sector suggests the Fed's higher rates have helped ease some of the demand. Uh, the economy now seems to be evolving close to what. The committee expected. Nevertheless, in the absence of a significant weakening in the labor market, I need to see several more months of good inflation data before I would be comfortable supporting an easing in the stance of monetary policy. Right? I mean, April CPI showed inflation running at 3.4% from a year ago. 3.4% from a year ago. And folks, that's from March of 2000. Excuse me. That's from, yeah, March of. 2023. Think about the inflation we had from 2021, 22, 23, and still compounded on those numbers, you're running at a number that's approaching 3.4% in that accord. Now, CPI, what is shelter in CPI? Something like 40%, I think, 35 to 40%. It might be 40%. Uh, it's a huge component of CPI, much more so even than PPI, which is why the Fed prefers the PPI in particular. But what happens when they start bringing down rates to the shelter component of CPI? Well, you know what's going to happen. You bring down rates. The cost of a mortgage is going to go down. What somebody can pay for a house is going to go up. And that's going to put pressure on inflation back to the upside. So they're going to take some time here. And we'll go over some of those charts when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in three minutes. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps off by about 7, NASDAQ 100 off 67. We get those NVIDIA earnings tomorrow after the bell, NVIDIA shares. You talk about a little bit of volatility, man. Yesterday, you come into the week where we closed out Friday at 924. We make it up to 950. NVIDIA shares right now drop into 935. You're down $12 in the pre-market right now from 947.80. I'm going to jump, to jump to a little retailers. How about Lowe's? Lowe's up about $5 on their numbers. We jump over to Lowe's. They beat on earnings and revenue even as consumers spend less on do-it-yourself projects. So they beat first quarter earnings and revenue expectations. Sales fell year over year. Now, interesting, right? Sales falling even as inflation is creeping up, Okay. And the home improvement retailer said, do-it-yourself consumers bought fewer pricey items. And they follow a revenue miss for its rival Home Depot. The numbers here, they stuck by their full-year forecast. The market probably likes that. It said it expects total sales between 84 to 85 billion, which would be, would be a drop from the 86.38 in 2023. Comp sales going to decline between 2 to 3 percent compared with the prior year ago, and earnings per share about 12 to 12 dollars and 30 cents for the last quarter. They beat on earnings. They beat on revenue. They keep their guidance in the three-month period and in May 3rd. Net income fell to $1.76 billion, not bad, uh, but compared to 2.26 a year ago. Sales dropped from $22.35 billion a year in the year-ago period. Uh, fifth quarter in a row that lowest posted a year-over-year -year sales decline. When you think about, though, right, bringing it back to whether it's home equity, refinancing, 
very difficult for anybody to refinance and take money out in that avenue of their homes right now. You can take a home equity line of credit out, okay, for sure. But boy, if you're refinancing right now and giving up a 25 or 20 year or, or whatever it is left on your mortgage at a rate of 3.5% or something, it's just not happening. And a lot of that money was getting used for home renovations, whatever it was in, in some capacity. So yeah, people have a lot of equity in their houses, but they can't access it. And it'd be interesting to see how that comes across. So there's home, uh, there's Lowe's, you jump over to Home Depot and a little bit of a bounce, but nonetheless, Home Depot actually back to where they were because they already came out with their numbers and you back it up to see their numbers, they're their numbers, where you dipped a little bit lower on their numbers, you got it back two days later. They're trading at 338, Home Depot came into their numbers at about 340 about a week ago. All right, we gotta talk about JP Morgan, Mr. Diamond. So. They had, what they have, an investor day yesterday or something like that. I think that's probably where he started talking at 11 o'clock. You were trained at 204. You were up to 207 in the pre-market. Was that an all-time high? That was. So they come into it at an all-time high. And um, he tempers the expectations a bit, Mr. Diamond. You know what? And I actually loved what he said from a investor with a long-term perspective. And I don't have any J.P. Morgan folks, okay? Probably wish I did. Where are we here? There we are. But it was interesting what he said. Now, he may be stepping down, too. That's part of what, not immediately, but some of his comments there, okay? This one talks about buybacks. Now, that's the consumer. But what he also talked about in here was that, you know, sooner rather than later, he may be exiting that role. He's 68 years old, and, yeah, I guess it's not talked about here. I got a bunch of articles up here. Maybe they talk about it here. No, nah, that's talking about the consumer business. Nonetheless, the thing he said here is that um, buying back stocks of a financial company greatly in excess of two times tangible book is a mistake. We aren't going to do it. He's talking about his own equity. Now, the reason why you don't hear CEOs say this is because of what the share price did yesterday. But in the long run, he's right. Okay? You have many companies – they continue to repurchase their, purchase their shares, hurting their shareholders in the long run because they're afraid to take a hit like this in the short run on a daily basis. Okay, You have many equities. We can go over them over and over and over, right, where CEOs have had re repurchases, um, buybacks of their own shares well over an adequate price level. Um, yeah, to be clear, J.P. Morgan has been repurchasing its stock under a previously authorized buyback plan. The bank resumed buybacks early last year after taking a pause to build up capital after we had a little bit of a banking crisis. They're still going to be buying two to two and a half billion on a quarterly clip is what the price is there. And uh, the CEO has often resisted pressure from investors and analysts that he deemed short sighted. OK, and it's paid off dividends. Now, the only problem with relying on that in the long run is he might not be there in the long run right now. He's 68 years old. And um, yeah, he may be be. Pursuing other avenues at some point. Still a young guy, 68 years old, but man, he's been in that role for a while. Now, some of the other things he said, because, boy, you got to listen. This guy, he is brilliant in many accords. And this, this little part of the CNBC article was talking about here, okay? Underappreciated risks, all right? Doesn't mean they're going to happen, but you want to be aware of the risks. I like to use the phrase, what's the probability? Probability is greater than zero. Well, you better be able to try to assess where that lies. And if it's greater than zero, it's a possibility that can occur. Underappreciated risks. On multiple occasions, he said he was cautiously optimistic, excuse me, pessimistic, not optimistic, pessimistic about economic risks, including those tied to inflation, interest rates, geopolitics, and the reversal of the Fed, uh, Federal Reserve's bond buying program. Markets are currently underappreciating those risks, Diamond said. For instance, price of high-quality corporate bonds do not adequately reflect the potential for financial stress. So keep this in mind on a longer-term macro basis. Okay, you got to listen to what he said because he's not talking up his own book when he's saying that I'm not buying my own shares when we're trading twice book. Okay, the investment grade credit spread, which is almost the lowest it's ever been, will be dead wrong. It's just a matter of time. 
Yeah. Uh, since 2002, Diamond has warned of an economic hurricane set off by geopolitical risks and quantitative tightening. While well, the continued strength of the economy has surprised many on Wall Street, his concerns have informed his de decision-making process ever since. We've been very, very consistent. If the stock goes up, we'll buy less. When it comes down, we'll buy more. I mean, on a longer-term basis, that's kind of what you want. All right. Do you really want him plowing more money in just because they have the capital? He was talking about dividends versus buybacks. And yeah, we all know how that goes, right? <clears throat> what happens? Well, dividends are going to get taxed. Buybacks are just another form of dividend. But guess what? When you have a buyback, you don't have to sell those shares. So you don't have to pay the taxes that come with holding that share. If you don't sell it versus a dividend that is issued, yeah, that's a dividend issued. You're normally going to have to pay taxes on dividends. Nonetheless, JP Morgan, they're lower. You're a little bit higher in the pre-market this morning. But on a macro, longer-term basis, man, that's how you should want your CEOs behaving. Because, yeah, they're going to pay the price today, okay? It trades off by $10. How many shares they got outstanding right now? Let's find out. I mean, it's quite a hit. All right. How many shares they got outstanding? Oh, come on. Update for me. We'll get it after the break. It's a big hit. But guess what? On a longer-term basis, that's not going to matter. You know what matters? What they're spending their capital on. And do they want to be buying JP Morgan shares at 206 when you were just trading at 180 a month ago, let alone trading at 140 in October last year? Stay tuned, folks. we got a lot more to talk about. We'll come back for the opening bell. Don't go away. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side-by-side -side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side-by-side -side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 7, NASDAQ 100 negative by 76 right now. We got NVIDIA out with their numbers tomorrow. We dip a little bit lower. You're down by 12 bucks or 1.3%. We jump around to some of the other big tech companies out there. Apple shares right now flat at 191. You jump over to Microsoft shares up a bit, trading at 425. You jump over to Amazon shares down 1% at 181.70 this morning. Excuse me, we jump over to Google shares. Google down about four tenths percent. And we jump over to Taiwan Semiconductor down about a half a percent. This article up there from Bloomberg, I believe it's this morning, right? Yeah, this morning, early this morning, updated about 6 30. And what it's talking about is is that ASML and Taiwan Semiconductor can disable chip machines if China invades Taiwan. I thought this was especially interesting on the heels of Diamond talking about potential geopolitical risks, right? They come out, and you're talking about what can they do if China invades Taiwan? Man, you want to talk about some geopolitical risks? If China ever invades Taiwan, folks, watch out for the market, let alone humanity, on the day that they do that, because... These two companies disabling their chip machines, if China invades Taiwan, it's not going to solve all the problems in the market on that day. And I know that you probably understand that to a certain degree. But here the articles are coming out. And make sure you're aware at least of the risks geopolitically, geopolitically that exist right now. Um, firms can remotely shut off advanced EUV chip-making machines. U.S. officials concerned over the risk of conflict to the chip industry. That is putting it lightly. Um, nonetheless, they supposedly have ways to disable the world's most sophisticated chip making machines in the event that China invades Taiwan. Folks, China invades Taiwan and they take over those chip manufacturing plants. You know, there is going to be a substantial disruption at this time. And unfortunately, I think it's a matter of when, not a matter of if, that that happens in some degree. Uh, you got remote shutoffs there is what the article talks about. I mean, look at some of these machines, right, that they're building. The global chip war, it's on, as we've all seen. Um, yeah, to put it lightly. Man, you talk about it, though, right? They got, quote-unquote, a kill switch. Yeah. Look at that. They sell them for $217 million a piece, those machines. ASML. Uh, their technology has long been subject to government interventions aimed at preventing it from falling into the wrong hands. The Netherlands prohibits the company from selling those machines to China, for instance, because of U.S. fears they could lend its rival an edge in the global chip war. Yeah. I mean, look at that, though. China is ASML's biggest market even after export controls. And what you have here is you have quarter by quarter Q2 2003, Q3 of last year, Q4, and then the yellow is Q4 of this year. It dwarfs everything out there, even though they've been restricting the most sophisticated chips out there. Nonetheless, China, they are behemoth, and it puts it lightly. And um, I just found it interesting that you're talking about, is that, does that quell fears? That should not quell fears, folks. Those headlines should should peak fears when you talk about those types of precautions being put in place, especially when you look at China and their goals going forward. And it is interesting when you look at, you know that they're paying attention to what Russia did with Ukraine. And China's been talking about their right to Taiwan for decades, okay? So they're going to think they have much more of a right to claim to Taiwan then Russia probably could make the case for Ukraine. And nonetheless, they're seeing it happen. And they're seeing, yeah, U.S. funding for Ukraine. But we've all seen um, the political strife that even in the U.S. for something like that. And nonetheless, the chip war is on. We jump over to more retailers. Macy's profit beats estimates. Turnaround shows profit. Department store chain raises earnings outlook for the year. And results may keep activist investor at bay amid buyout talks. We jump over to Macy's this morning. Up by 2.2%. Now, the thing about Macy's here, check it out. There's your little bit of volatility. You spike, you jump up, you're up by 2.7%, up by 50 cents for a $19.60 price tag for Macy's. We take a little bit of a longer-term look, though, on Macy's, man. All right? Look at this trend line, okay? Let's extend that to the right. Look where we are. Now, what you'd love to see is maybe a little bit of a break above. You pull back. You test that. That's where you're going to look for the buy in Macy's. Okay, we haven't had that yet. You've been chopping around. That's a weekly. Let's back it up on a daily. You see the context of the trend line. And look at how many times you bumped up again. You bumped up there in April. And this thing has just been holding that area basically for the month of May. May 7th, you got slightly above it, traded lower. You got slightly above it on the earnings this morning. You're at 1962. So keep your eye on those Macy's numbers. But nonetheless, they trade higher. And yeah, 
Um, the results may ease some pressure for the CEO to help convince shareholders that he deserves more time to execute that turnaround. Yeah, as they get buyout offers. I'm a firm believer that we have a strategy that is showing green shoots. Yeah. Um, Macy's 15 member board is in the due diligence process with their activist investor. They're up this morning, adjusted earnings 27 cents a share, about double the average analyst estimates. They're now looking for a full year profit to be at least 255 a share. They were looking for 245 previously. Comp sales still declining, down 1.2%. It is interesting. You know what? I can't remember the last time I was in the Macy's and bought anything. And I used to love going to Macy's. Um, the world has changed a lot. I have a son now. I'm not quite as close in Lakeland as I was to Tampa to a Macy's. But nonetheless, you see the differences, man. Big box retailers in that type of de degree. I mean, and they got some rent, right? You talk about some rent, man, for that type of a facility that those Macy's stores are. Yeah. In the most recent quarter, comp sales at Bloomingdale's rose 8%. It's a different story. Um yeah, nonetheless, Macy's up a bit as they beat on expectations. Yeah, how about Elon? We got to talk about Elon, man. Now, I've been a little bit of a bear. And what's so amazing on this is that Elon's become quite a divisive figure. And if you give him grief, the fanboys come out, okay? Be careful in this equity, folks, okay? Be careful. It is absolutely remarkable that somehow they come into earnings. He tells you that RoboTaxi event is coming in August. You drive from 138 up to a 200. I think that's like a 40 something percent increase in what was it? A week, 422 to 429. Yeah, one week the equity pops 47 percent or something bananas. Okay, Elon has a history of over promising on certain things like that. And here's what I'll say is somehow, and I mindlessly scroll Instagram occasionally. All right, and one of the things that somehow Instagram has figured out that I enjoy the algorithm, the AI, is watching craziness happen with whether it's cars, whether it's Teslas, whether it's autopilot. I do not trust Teslas. I will not be getting in a robo-taxi from Tesla anytime soon. Okay? It's not happening. He has a history of over-promising and under-delivering for certain aspects. He's brilliant. He's changed the world. People have had millions and millions of dollars, all right? Well, the world is a much better off place for him for pushing that forward, for SpaceX, right, for all those things, okay? You can say both in the same sentence, in the same paragraph. But when you talk about robo-taxis, you need a level of trust, for people to get into your taxis. And when this equity is pricing in that for the future, just be careful, man, because they're, you know, the whole EV market is tasting, taking some serious heat right now. So it seems like the promise of this equity is based off that August event for robo taxis. And I find it hard to believe. I would be much more pressed to get into any other fleet of vehicles for the big, re um, the big automakers because I trust them more. And that's a ridiculous thing to say in a certain accord. But pay attention to that one, man. And then you add in the pay package on top of it, which is what this one's talking about. That makes no sense whatsoever. We'll finish that conversation when we get up. We got a lot more to talk about, man. We'll talk some more equities. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? 
one simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P down about five right now. NASDAQ 100 off 54. The Dow off 17. How about Bitcoin? Hanging tough at 71,000. Crude hanging lower at 78.46. We check in on the gold market this morning. Gold down about seven dollars. I mean, check out gold, though, right? You talk about it, man. Gold. I mean, look at where the way you're pushing some of these highs on a weekly basis. Gold trades up to a high of 24.48. On the week of April 8th, you do it on about 1.6 million shares. You you dip lower on slightly higher, higher volume, and we're back above that level. We'll see how we trade. It's only Tuesday right now, but we already have 431,000 shares on the futures right now in gold. Pretty remarkable acceleration. We go back to Tesla shares. Now, so this one from the journal that we're talking about here, okay? And what is interesting, let me get that article up. There it is. So the journal here is talking about an, um, a shareholder group sending a letter. And I'm sure that letter is going to matter to the board, right? No. Uh, shareholder group slams Elon's $56 billion pay package. Eight holders write a letter raising a litany of governance issues. Investors are voting again on that unprecedented payout. Now, one thing that's worth noting here is, man, the flagging share price since he disclosed his Twitter stick, okay? You have the S&P 500 up by 15%, and you have Tesla shares down 54%. This is since he purchased Twitter. Now, you could make the case that Elon <coughs> was aware that Tesla shares were overvalued, created a little bit of a smoke screen, and this is, I would make that case, okay, to allow himself to sell shares at an overvalued price without saying that he just wanted to do it for that reason. He said he had to do it to buy Twitter, to save free speech. Nonetheless, Tesla shares are down 54%. The market's up 15.8%. Remember when he was out there for the longest time slamming the Fed as the reason why the market was getting hammered? Turns out that they're an anomaly right now in this market as they have been getting hammered. Now, one of the reasons why, bringing it back to that pay package, okay, that he demanded the 2018 pay package was that he needed that type of incentive to stay focused on that one company. Otherwise, as an entrepreneur, okay, he was going to pursue other paths. This flies in the face of that pay package. What did he do? He went out, he bought another company. I mean, how much time does he spend on Twitter, on that acquisition, in that office, right? No other CEO would get away with this. And yeah, 
as that's happened, the company has underperformed dramatically. So I don't understand the logic, even with the logic that they are spinning, it makes no sense whatsoever because he hasn't remained consistent to that company. The only reason that he got that type of a pay package was the board argued that he was a special case, he's pertinent to the role, and the only way to keep him invested is to give him incentives that defy logic, basically. And what did they do? They gave him that pay package, and what did he do? He sold shares, bought another company, spent a bunch of his time pursuing that other company, and since he purchased that other company privately, his equity is down 54% and the market is up 16% over that time. You got to remain with the facts. Now, here's some anecdotal evidence to go on top of it, okay? Yes, a lot of that company is based off of stories right now, okay? It's not based off of how much they sell per vehicle, all right? That's for sure. What is interesting, though, is when you start looking at the absolute maniacal numbers that he's dealing with with a pay package of $56 billion. Number one, what are we talking about for a market cap right now? $570 billion. So that is saying right now, oh, no, that was JP Morgan. Hold on. It's probably pretty close though, right? Is it? What are they at? No. Okay, that is Tesla. $570 billion is what Tesla's market cap is right now. That's giving him 10% of the company to remain as CEO. That means if you own shares at 180, you're giving him an $18 pay package as CEO. It's a remarkable pay package. Now, when you take the $56 billion, okay, just looking at the amount of cars that they sold last year. Now, yes, things are ramping up, okay? They are ramping up, but they're not going to ramp up how they ha as they have. But I'm just taking... 2023 numbers. They sold 1.808 million cars. I'm just going to ballpark it at 1.8 million cars. Okay. That's how many they sold, delivered worldwide last year. 1.8 million cars. If you take $56 billion and you divide it per a car, that is giving Elon $31,000 per vehicle that they sold last year. It's insanity, folks. Okay. And, you know, part of the reason why he wanted to sell all those shares to buy Twitter is because he's got the biggest bully pulpit in the world right now. All right. Nothing like being the biggest uh, voice out there. You're the richest man in the world. I'm surprised more people with that type of money don't make those types of acquisitions to control a speech the way that he now does. And I'm all about free speech. Okay. Um, but he is now the arbiter of free speech and what better to spend your money on as the richest person in the world than becoming the arbiter of free speech when you talk about who gets to be that decider but you know stay on to to back it up for a second stay on the chart that i just showed you talking about the performance of his company versus the s p 500 since that uh, purchase of Twitter because remember that he made that pay package because of the fact that he said that is the pay package that is necessary to remain focused on this company and during that same time he went out he bought another private company he spent ample time on that private company and his company is now down 54% since that acquisition and meanwhile the S&P is up 16% that's the facts man that's the facts as they say folks all right, we jump around. What else we have going on? Well, you know what we got going on, folks? We got live trading Fridays with our man Larry Pesavento, man. When I, uh, I've been recovering and I've had a little bit more time, I've been in here with Larry when he's in there on Fridays, and he's got one coming up this Friday. Now, folks, he's in there twice a month, okay? Don't think that you have to only sign up at the beginning of the month because no matter when you sign up, it's a recurring subscription. You get two of these a month, okay? So – you can still save fifty dollars off for the first month when you sign up this for this folks okay that is the key here you can subscribe you can enter the code Larry live at checkout you lock in fifty dollar savings for the life of your subscription normally this product is two hundred and ninety five dollars okay you enter the product Larry live I'm gonna do it right now Larry live make sure you hit that add code button there it is fifty dollars that brings you down to 245 and that's locked in forever okay so you're paying 245 a month 
you're getting two three-hour live trading sessions. So you're basically paying, what is that, one twenty-two fifty per trading session with Larry. You're getting two of them. Uh, you get them in there, three hours. Those are archived. You can watch them as many times as you'd like. And that code is only going to run through this month, folks, okay? And this is going to be the Friday before Memorial Day. But we got some action, man. He does them in the morning, 9 till 12 in the morning. That's where a lot of the action takes place. That's happening on Friday. Um, but don't miss out. There's still time to sign up and check it out. Our man Larry, he's going to be in there this Friday. And stay tuned, folks. we got one more segment. We'll be right back to finish up the program. Don't go away, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got a chart of Boeing up here. Boeing off 1.8% right now. Now, the headline out there, um, unfortunately, Singapore Air seems like they hit a pocket of air. But what was interesting is, in this story, one dead, fortunately, 30 injured as Singapore Airlines flight encounters severe turbulence. The reason why I bring this up most is anytime I, I see an article, anecdotal, okay, anytime I see an article now, I find myself saying, what kind of plane is that? Is that a Boeing plane? Just think about that for a second because I'm not the only one folks okay and guess what it's a Boeing airplane seems like they hit a pocket of air but did they is there a matter um, 
we can confirm that there are, are injuries and one fatality of board of Boeing 777-300ER. The company said in an initial update on Facebook, the airport official said that the decreased uh, deceased person, 73-year-old British national report, is reported, uh, 18 individuals have been hospitalized. But just think about the shift in brand that any time I see anything going on with an airline, I say, is that a Boeing? Is that a Boeing? Yeah, and they're off 1.8% today. And uh, yeah. That might have to do with that. I'm not sure, you know, but guess what? Probably not a coincidence that thing dives on the open as you never know. Maybe the regulators are going to say, hey, let's make sure that that had to do with the air. And let's make sure that they don't have some quality issues that allowed that to be an exacerbated issue versus if the airline, the aircraft had been up to date, whatever it is. Right. You get the point. Pretty remarkable. Uh, the brand tarnish that has happened on that company. All right. And then you jump to this one on the journal. The highest paid CEOs of 2023 stock awards pushed the median package to 15.7 million tech, tech execs. Not surprising. Top the list. Um, interesting, though, when you look at this number in light of Elon pushing for 56 billion dollars. This is the total comp of CEOs. Median number. Median. OK. Right in the middle of the pack. 15 million bucks is what the number is, including equity awards, including equity awards. And meanwhile, you got Elon pushing for what, $11 billion a year as his company's down 56% since he purchased Twitter. Okay. Don't get caught up in the rhetoric, folks. That Elon package is just uh, bonkers, to put it lightly. Blackstone, 120 million. Said the company's 83% total return surpassed U.S. asset managers. Yeah. Not surprising. Nonetheless, thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil. He's coming up next. He did his show at 8 o'clock. Live programming after that. Great to be back. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Have a great day.